Well, thank you for coming in today. We're very excited to have you. My name is Ziad and I will be your interviewer today. Awesome, great. I'm super excited to be here. I am Ria Bagia. Awesome. So um, do you want to just dive straight into the case? Yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, let's do it. So for today's case, you actually have a maker of Botox that is considering expanding into the migraine market. And they've already begun clinical trials in this area. The product is expected to receive FDA approval at the end of the year, and your team has been hired to assess the viability of the product launch. So essentially the question is, how would you determine if Botox company should enter the migraine market? Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing that information. Um, so just before I get started, I want to make sure I correctly understand the situation at hand. So our client here is Botox and they are considering expanding into the migraine market. And the product they're working with um, is going through the trial process now, waiting for FDA approval. And our main goal here is to figure out whether or not it's um, viable or not to enter the migraine market. That's correct. Okay, awesome. So. Before we get started, um, just wanted a little bit more information about the product. Do you know exactly what it looks like? Sure. Um, so what I know is that the product is basically an injection that is given every two months. And it offers similar efficacy to other like market options without any side effects. Um, and as a benefit, it does have some like skincare benefits to it, so. Okay, awesome. As a person who loves skincare, that's amazing. Um, I feel like that's all the information I need, so is it okay if I take a couple moments to brainstorm my thoughts? Absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Okay, great. So, after looking at the situation at hand, in order to figure out whether or not Botox should enter the migraine market, there's three main factors I'm thinking about. The migraine market, financial implications, and just overall risks. So, under the migraine market, I think it would be really beneficial to understand what the size of the migraine market looks like and what consumer demand is. Um, also diving into how fast it's growing, if it's stagnant, shrinking, um, just like the overall market growth. And then I think it'd be really beneficial to understand what other treatments are out there and what potential competition would look like to see what Botox's market share could be. So second, diving into the financial implications, there's kind of two sides I think would be helpful, the revenues and costs. So under revenues, um, I think it would be great to understand what the competitors are pricing injections for to determine how Botox should price it. Um, it'd be also helpful to understand what our customer's elasticity is and their willingness to pay to figure out a good price. And then doing a little bit more analysis into what number of units sold could look like and how cannibaliz cannibalization of other Botox products would affect this launch. And then on the cost side, it would be helpful to understand what initial investments would be needed, looking at the research and development, um, maybe potential clinical trial costs, and then what ongoing costs there may be for this injection. And third, the risks. Um, I see two main areas within the risks, a logistical aspect and then more regulatory. So in the logistics, I think Something to keep note of is figuring out whether or not Botox has the capabilities to add additional supply chain, distribution centers, or production facilities. Um, maybe diving a little bit into what our administrative or workforce expertise and skills look like to see if it's capable for us to launch such a big product. And then lastly, under logistical risks, kind of figuring out if this injection matches with Botox's mission and portfolio of their other products. And then lastly, under regulation risks, um, you had mentioned that we're in the clinical trial process looking for FDA approval. So diving into what the barriers to entry would be, looking at specifically the FDA approval, um, maybe if any patents are needed, what progressing clinical trials look like. So after assessing the overall migraine market, financial implications and risks, I think we would have a good understanding if this is a viable entry or not. But looking at it, um, I think it'd be beneficial to start off with the market as a whole and see if that's attractive or not. Does that sound good? Yeah, let's do that. Actually, that, I think that's a good place to start. Um, maybe we can go by how big do you think this market is in the first place? Okay, perfect. So just to make sure you want me to market size the overall 
Botox injection market. Is that specifically for the US? That's correct, just the US. Okay, perfect. Is it okay if I take a couple moments to brainstorm my thoughts? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So the way to, that I think about this is to estimate the size of the Botox injection market, we should start off with the overall US population, then dive into the percentage of people who suffer from headaches, and then the percentage of people who have headaches that are bad enough that they would need these injections. Then, by doing those calculations, we can get the total size of, like the total number of patients that we'd be working with. And then from there, I'm thinking I could estimate the number of injections per patient and put a price tag to that to figure out the overall market size for injections. And then we are looking specifically at Botox's share, so then applying um, what our potential market share would look like to get the overall Botox market size for injections. Does that sound like a good process? Yeah, no, that's a good approach. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna take a moment to um, put the math to that. Okay, awesome. So. If we start off with the US population of 320 million, I would say about, thinking from personal experience of my friends, like one in every five, I feel like, get headaches. So we could say about 20% of people suffer from headaches. And then out of those, that 20%, I'd say like one in four people have headaches that are so bad that they would need some sort of like migraine injection treatment. So let's take 25% of that. So 20% of 320 million is 64 million. And then a fourth of 64 million is gonna be 16 million. So that's the number of patients that may be needing an injection. Next, I'm gonna think about like how many injections a, per a patient would need. I think you would mention that the in these injections are needed every two months. So a patient would need it six times a year. And then next I want to think about what a potential price would be. So I personally have not had any Botox, I'm only 21, um, but I'm thinking that it ranges quite a bit from very cheap options to more expensive. Off the gun, I think about 200 is a pretty fair um, price tag to put on it. I think so, that's a good price. Okay, great. So I'll take the 16 million number of patients times six injections a year times $200 per injection. And I'll just take a moment to crank out that math really quickly. 16 times six is 96, times 200 is going to be $19.2 billion. So I'm getting $19.2 billion for the total market, but we're looking specifically at Botox. Botox, I know, has like a really big name. They're a well-known company, so I'm assuming they have a pretty high market share. I think around 30% is a good bet. Does that sound like a good number? I would say so, yeah, 30% is a good number. Okay, great. So I'm gonna take 30%, and is it okay if I round that 9.2 billion to 19 billion? Sure. Okay, great. So 30% of 19 billion is gonna be I know 19 times three is 57, so 30% of 19 will be 5.7 billion. So I'm getting a total number of $5.7 billion for the US Botox injection market. Great, so looking at that number, I'm trying to figure out whether or not it's attractive or not. It seems like a pretty big number, but I think to really determine if the market is attractive or not, we could look at what potential growth looks like or what the competitive landscape is. Do we have any information about either of those? Yeah, so we have some information about it. We know that when it comes to market growth, we expect the market to remain somewhat stagnant, so no growth nor is there a decline. And then when it comes to the competitive landscape, we actually don't expect there to be a lot of competitors, so we think that it's kind of not a very competitive market to go into, so we don't expect any like fierce competition of some sorts. Okay, perfect. So knowing that the market is pretty stagnant, pretty large at 5.7 billion and not too saturated, it looks like the market as a whole is pretty attractive, but I think I would still like to discuss a little bit more and dive into maybe the financial implications or potential risks 
Do we have any information about maybe financial implications? Yeah, so we actually think that the financial the, the financial side would probably be like looking good based off of like the 5.7 billion estimate that you have. Um, I'm actually more interested in looking at the risks. Could you maybe brainstorm a few ideas or potential risks that the Botox company could be facing when they enter the migraine market? Yeah, of course. Is it okay if I take a couple moments to think about that one? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, great. So I'm thinking there's three main causes of concern our client should think about before entering the Botox market and that comes with branding, cannibalization, and patient concerns. So first under branding, I'm thinking even if they use the same name as Botox or a different name and different brand, there's risks to both sides. If our client was supposed to use the Botox name, keep that same name, I know that Botox has a very specific connotation to it, that it's cosmetic, kind of controversial sometimes, um, but we're not servicing a cosmetic product, so it might turn some patients away because ours is a migraine injection, not a cosmetic injection. But then if we were to use a different name, there is the possibility of there being a lack of market traction because you have to redo all the marketing and branding since Botox already has a big name. So if you were to use a different one, a little bit harder to get some traction there. So that was the branding side. Next we look under cannibalization. So Botox already has some pre-existing products, of course. Um, they have some injections, like lip injections, I think. Um, so I'm thinking that if we're launching a new product at a pretty similar price range, maybe lower, it might cannibalize some of Botox's pre-existing products. So that is a concern to look at. But I'm thinking that if we do a little bit more investigation into the regulatory process or other mechanisms to kind of keep the market separate, that could be a potential mitigation to it. And then lastly is the patient concerns. Um, I'm thinking that with patient concerns, I know that I personally am very scared of shots. So there may be other patients out there that are a little bit adverse to injectable therapies, especially when there might be oral remedies like other like Tylenol or Advil or other things that they could take to get rid of their migraine. Um, another patient concern to think about is that they, the injection is still being approved by the FDA, right? So they may be a little bit averse to using a product that has just been approved and may be looking to see more research or more trials in the future. And then the last concern with patients is that Insurance companies may not necessarily pay for the Botox injection, so we may have to look a little bit more with insurance companies to make sure that this is something that they will put onto their plan. Awesome. Um, all sound like good risks to take into account. So CEO of the company walks in and uh, wants a 30 second recommendation. What do you say? Awesome. Um, yeah, I would say this sounds like a very viable opportunity. It seems like the market is very attractive. We did calculations and saw that the market is about $5.7 billion that Botox could tap into, which seems very attractive since the market is stagnant. It's not super saturated. Um, just as a potential risk though, since we're still in the clinical trials and FDA process, it's very dependent on making it past that. Um, so just continuing to do the clinical trials working with insurance companies to make sure it can get on the plan and marketing the product in a way that alleviates patient concerns for like using the product in the future, I feel like are the best ways to go. But yeah, overall seems like a great opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the time. And uh, yeah, I thought, I thought that that was, a, that was a good case. Awesome, thank you. That's exactly how a mock interview goes. When it comes to Rhea's performance, I thought that she did fantastic. Everything from the beginning all the way to the end. When it came to the prompt, she asked thoughtful clarifying questions and she made sure that she understood the objective. When it came to the framework, this was a combination of a market entry and a market sizing case and I think that she did a good job at structuring both frameworks. On the market entry side, she explained that we needed to look at the market, the financials and the risks. When it came to the market sizing, she laid out a very good approach that was structured and clear on how she would calculate the market size. On the analysis side, she did great when it came to the math. All of her numbers were sharp and her methodology was very clear and she was able to explain all of the numbers to me. 
Finally, when it came to the brainstorming, she was able to put everything into different buckets and she remained structured and poised throughout the entire process. So overall, I thought she, that she did very well and I would definitely accelerate her to the next round.